So hello, welcome to this is the last module of the lecture material. After this, uh, you will see me again at least once uh, when we will be uh, reviewing all those uh, survey questions results that I have given you uh, during uh, earlier weeks. So you will I will have that video up uh, uh, pretty soon uh, after uh, after this week. So. It's a, we will be looking at electronic waste management. Uh, if you remember from the last video what we did, we were looking at uh, recycling, how the recycling is being practiced globally. And today we'll continue that discussion. We'll talk about uh, how the recycling is being taken up, uh, not, only by the, not only by the companies uh, of electronics uh, manufacturers, but also by some of the uh, urban local bodies. In many, many countries in the world, uh, the municipalities are looking at the possibility of making money out of electronics as well. If you, if you remember from the rule that we talked about from the Indian contest, we were uh, saying that uh, in India for the e-waste management rules, uh, we want our uh, electronic producers to set up a recycling center. There should be an authorized recycling collection. And that's one way of uh, uh, doing uh, recycling of e-waste. Uh, that is, uh, you saw some example of uh, similar things being done in a more in a cooperative way in uh, Best Buy or Office Depot and other places that I showed you in the video in the in the previous video. But some is some of the municipalities uh, around the world is also looking at the possibility of uh, why don't we collect the garbage. So you, you, this type of signage, uh, it's kind of becoming common these days where you see that municipalities are looking at uh, household collection of e-waste uh, for recycling is not common, but many municipalities, what they are doing, they're providing free drop-off service for the residents. What they are, what they are trying to do here, they couple it with household hazardous waste recycling facility. So household hazardous waste collection is uh, usually is not done as we were talking about in the municipal solid waste part is not usually not done from a individual houses. What they do is they put a collection center where you and I can go and drop off household hazardous waste. Similarly, uh, where they can drop off household hazardous waste, the, course, the thing is that why don't you drop off your electronic waste there as well. So what they have been looking at is uh, they try to evaluate how to collect it, process it and look at uh, even to try to make some money out of that. So for example, this is one e-waste collection area uh, for one of the municipalities in Florida where they are collecting this e-waste and uh, if some of those workers uh, working there, they also actually try to look at some of these electronic waste and if there's something could be salvaged, uh, they can use it uh, for, that, for that as well. So there has been a cases uh, like I, I personally was benefited when I was doing my waste management research uh, as part of my PhD, I did find a, I didn't find a TV there which just has a minor problem and then I brought the TV home and it, it was like a 25 inch TV as I'm talking about uh, uh, early 2000. So it's, um, it was a pretty big TV at that particular time and that worked, that worked for my PhD day. So it's, uh, so things can be salvaged, can be recovered, can be sold off. So people are looking at making money out of that as well in terms of uh, electronic waste uh, recycling. Uh, in terms of the economics, uh, they contain valuable resource that we talked about earlier. So in terms, most time uh, the market, so why doesn't the market dictate the most WEEE being recycled? It is the process of recycling to, to recover this valuable resource. That's actually very challenging. Uh, so we'll talk about some of this process here as well. So recovery of those uh, is very challenging and many times what happens is actually you end up paying some money rather than getting some money. So here as you can see over... Uh, for the different types of uh, 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 like a, uh, electronics, uh, depending on 15 inch or smaller CRT monitor, 17 inch monitor, 19 inch monitor, air conditioner was not accepted, alarm clock, answering machine, appliances, bathroom appliances, MP3 player, major appliances, not a major drive, microwave oven, modem. So there are different stuff and if you, if you drop off one of these, you actually have to pay these fees. So there was actually a fee associated with that because it takes, it takes an effort to recycle those. It's not, and uh, it, it does make money, but uh, if you want to do it, as I was trying to tell you in the previous module as well, that if you set up a plant which really works taking into consideration all the environmental health and safety into consideration, it's very, it's, it's, uh, it requires a lot of uh, investment. So to make that happen, what we try to do is, uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, we are uh, like to make that happen, we have to uh, find money from somewhere. And uh, 
that's what uh, these money go for that uh, it's like if you, it's a certain type of uh, as you can see over here depending on the type of uh, waste that you uh, drop off you have to pay certain fee to drop off those waste it's not a lot of money uh, just a but it's a small amount of money but that money goes add up those money add up and they help in uh, development of recycling uh, system so and like how it is being recycled or what happens to it uh, like in uh, it's uh, once it's discarded by generator it goes to recycler some of them could be resold as i was as i was telling you that if it's good say if you have a three bad computer out of that if you can make one good computer because of the, some of the parts you can salvage and you can make one good uh, uh, computer out of that so that uh, uh, that's your uh, that can be resold you can refurbish uh, and resell you can ref refurbish and resell as well disassemble and sell the parts some of the parts may be working then you can recover the scrap value of the parts so those are uh, it's it's being done it's uh, if it's done in a in a formal sector but many of the as you, the things highlighted in red over here what is happening is we have export of e waste is happening a lot in terms of developing countries so a lot of e waste is being uh, exported to the developing countries where we have uh, e waste making way uh, uh, to the developing countries in the past decade or almost like two decades where things are going into uh, developing countries. You see some pictures here now and this is pictures from Ghana in China and uh, those places. You can go on YouTube, you can find several videos of how e-waste is being improperly managed in Indian context. So that is also out there. So as you can see, uh, e-waste is dumped along with the other waste over here. Uh, in, this is from the Ghana and you see all these electronic waste just piled up over there. So we have this electronic waste all piled up which needs to be disposed. So that's uh, uh, that is over there. Here you can see the waste, uh, which is it says uh, city of Los Angeles, uh, state of California. So this they are, uh, and this waste was found in uh, Africa, in China, in India. So even the waste is, so this basically shows that the waste is traveling from the western countries uh, to Indian subcontinent, Africa and other places. This picture is uh, like a classical picture. All these pictures actually came from this band.org. It's their picture. I'm just using them. They have uh, uh, for this lecture purposes. You cannot, please don't reproduce it uh, without uh, approval from band um, because I have been given approval just to use it for the lecture material. And uh, so this is, uh, this is again, uh, this, this picture is from China. Hey, this is a very classical picture. You will see, you see this picture many times in different, uh, uh, different news reports that this particular village their uh, whole surface water source was was uh, uh, got uh, damaged or you can say became unusable because of improper management of e-waste you see this uh, here to recover some of these uh, copper these wires are being burned and you can see all these black fumes going into this that's all the like the dioxins and furans because of those plastic coating on top of that and this why this plastic wires are being burned just to recover some of those copper there copper, aluminum, which are little bit precious uh, metal, which they can sold off. And but the amount of environmental and human health impact that it is coming, the cost of uh, environmental and human health impact probably is much, much more than the cost of the amount of gold uh, or amount of copper or uh, aluminum that is being recovered here. Here things are being used in, this is you see all these tubs, they are, they have aquaregia. Aquaregia is a concentrated form of sulfuric acid and nitric acid which can dissolve uh, lots of metals. And these, these uh, drums being used uh, with aquaregia. And uh, as you can see, people, like people are just uh, uh, using this uh, rubber boots, uh, some sort of protection, lot of fumes, uh, inhaling all these fumes and becoming sick. And, uh, and of, co of course, it is also contaminating the surrounding uh, uh, soil, water, air and all, all the different stuff. Again, things being burned off. Things which first, what, what is the typical procedure they do? They dismantle, they try to recover whatever they could and many times whatever they could not recover because of uh, it's difficult to do that. If they have plastic, they just burn it. So plastic once burned goes away, you have now they have metals left, try to recover the metals out of that. But the process is so crude, the process is so informal without any environmental protection, without any uh, uh, personal personal gear protection, like personal protection, protection, people are getting sick, people are getting affected with all these uh, uh, contamination. You can see another picture of uh, lots of fumes and other stuff going in into the atmosphere. Some more. Uh, uh, pictures from all these e-waste. Yeah, now you can see people are trying to just try to recover some of this copper, uh, try to recover this copper from there. 
and uh, so as you can see very crude way of working it they are not they, it's not a sophisticated those all uh, we have these uh, 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 like a hammer and other stuff which is being used uh, to do that so it's not it's uh, it's not uh, very uh, excuse me here excuse me yes this needs to be there yeah so we have a uh, so as you can see, it's being be, being done in a very crude way. Yeah, it's a uh, all those hammers, cheese cells, and no no sophisticated equipment, which will not be there if you set up a e-waste recycling facility. As we have seen uh, in earlier slides, earlier video, that in India also we have several e-waste recycling facilities being set up, but they are not able to get electronics. And the the way the electronics is being managed is this. You go on YouTube, you will find several of these videos uh, showing in how the e-waste is being managed in uh, Indian condition. So just to recover some of this copper out there, just they are getting all these uh, no pro no protection, no protection here, no mask, nothing. So as you can see, uh, getting uh, possibly getting hurt, maybe getting some needles and other like uh, things may they may get some uh, other other kind of problems as well. And uh, this particular village that I was talking about, this is the water body they had. And that water body here, there were gentlemen taking a sample. And this, uh, again, this uh, gentleman was from the Basel Action Network. And who did this? Uh, there is a video actually out there exporting harm. If you go on uh, uh, exporting R T I N G, exporting harm. If you go on YouTube and try to type this exporting harm, and you will see this, uh, it, like the story behind these two pictures that you are looking at right now. And this is a village in, uh, in southern China where they are basically destroyed that village uh, groundwater, uh, surface water source because of the improper e-waste disposal. And this surface water which is over, this surface water had a, this gentleman is taking some soil water sample, sediment sample and the pH was almost zero. Like pH was close to zero, like less than one. Uh, that's what uh, on the pH meter it came out to be very close to zero and uh, lead was almost 25 uh, uh, I think it's around more than 100 times the drinking water limit. So uh, this water was contaminated they cannot use this water as you can see over here whatever they could recover uh, they could uh, after this is the material which could not be recovered and this just dumped on the side of the uh, river and then things will keep on leaching into this river and getting into the sediments and uh, becoming a problem uh, for uh, uh, for your uh, uh, soil sediment and of course good things may go can get airborne as well again you see lots of uh, activities uh, going on in terms of electronics the village after village so that you see people people are working on it and this is now in ghana uh, in africa as you can see things have been dismantled again whatever could not they could recover just dumped on the side of the uh, surface water People taking it, uh, those wires and other stuff, they are going to burn it uh, just to recover some of those heavy metals. And all these people are getting uh, exposed to all these fumes. So, as you can see over here, these people are getting, all these people are getting exposed to all these fumes. And think about the health condition of these people after being exposed to these kind of uh, toxic fumes day in and day out for several days. So, it's uh, of course not good. Um, Again, uh, things coming from uh, United States and other places. Such a nice water body. Now, lots of electronics and other things dumped on the side of the road. So it's kind of it's kind of sad, but this is what is happening. And then you can see very crude way of trying to find out, uh, trying to recover some of those materials. See, the people are trying to recover some of those stuff. Again, same same way. And uh, you see this water, e-waste, all this electronic waste right there, and uh, same water coming in here. And the, this lady is using similar water, washing the fish. Uh, think about the quality of the fish. So, uh, and what kind of contaminant the fish is there? Fish will carry to the food or on the food table, on your dinner table, or in the, or in in the lunch table. So, those things, uh, and it leads to the human health impact. So that's uh, again here uh, doing some stuff uh, using uh, in crude way, trying to get all those wires. Again, they will try to burn it. Uh, going through the electronic waste, again working with Aquaregia, again this lady is uh, trying to burn some stuff to take those uh, uh, 
uh, those uh, what, what we call it chips out and uh, in the process is burning using some acid and that acid will create some fumes and she does not have any uh, personal protective equipment. So, she is basically getting all those fumes uh, coming into her. So, those uh, again another, another picture. So, there are lots of pictures and we can go over that pictures after pictures actually you can see people are just being exposed to all these different stuff. So, much of waste. So, on one hand we as a society we have been so much after electronics. Now, what iPhone X is there. Uh, iPhone 8, uh, I do not know whether it is launched in India or not. I, I'm, I, I have not seen anybody with iPhone 8 yet, uh, but uh, we, we live in uh, not that uh, high fi place. So, but uh, anyway, so it is a iPhone X is there, then there will be some other, then there will be some other and uh, doing puja there will be some other models coming up and uh, then Diwali uh, there will be other models. So, it is the problem is uh, uh, with, with the consumerism. Uh, we are forced to buy things, we buy uh, things just because it is cool, but we do not we don't think about at, after it is all done, once this waste goes into the disposal, this is what is happening with it. This is what is happening with it and this is how it is contaminating the uh, water, contaminating the air and uh, all that stuff. Some more pictures, so I will uh, try to go over that really quick and it, as you can see, people and the uh, thing is that uh, since uh, it is so uh, uh, the, the countries, the African countries are so poor uh, compared to the other places. So, it, this the electronics that is coming in here, it is a livelihood. So, it is not that uh, it is not only the problem of the western world dumping it, it is of course, the prop, there are people in uh, Africa, there are people in India who wants those ways to come in so that they can make some livelihood out of that. Of course, at the cost of they make a livelihood for a few years and uh, at the cost of their health, at the cost of the environmental health, but uh, that does. Uh, so, it is basically our, our system needs to, we need to get these people at least some skill as that is what I was talking about in the solid waste management class as well. The whole this program, there are lots of program announced by government of India recently, but all these programs can be used. For example, is Skill India. Let us just give a skill to these kind of people who can uh, do this electronic waste recycling in a, in a better way and let us formalize them, bring, bring them with the formal sector, merge the informal and formal sector, help them come up with the economic model. That is where the government uh, has to play its role, I think. Without government uh, playing its role, let us, uh, it, it, it will be difficult uh, to achieve it. Again, some more pictures, things are being taken away. Uh, there are different uh, kind of material, again things burning in an indoor kind of a very closed environment, getting all the fumes, uh, going through all these different kind of stuff. Things on the side of the water, this is very, very common. So, what we are talking about, so it looks at, you saw lots of pictures. So, what we are looking at the pollution from uncontrolled WEEE recycling operation. And what kind of pollution we are looking at? We are looking at heavy metals, lead, cadmium, we already talked about that, why they are bad, uh, flame retardants, PBDEs, then chemicals resulting from the processing. So, we have pH because uh, uncontrolled, like a incomplete burning, PA polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, then dioxins and furans. So, these are all nasty stuff and this is what is coming out in terms of uh, pollutants when they are uh, in uncontrolled WEEE recycling. So, there have been uh, uh, studies have been done uh, where they have found elevated concentration of pollutants uh, in air, soil sediments, not much work we see from the Indian contest. Right now, uh, we are trying to do one work. I have a PhD student who is trying to do some work in Kolkata, Patna and Delhi area uh, for elevated concentration of pollutants in, uh, we will try to do some soil sediments, biomass. We are also trying to do some water, human, like a human in terms of urine, blood, nail, hair and those samples. So, because we are seeing elevated concentration of pollutions uh, that have been encountered. So, the reason for our study is to kind of uh, showcase that it is a high time that we start implementing our e-waste management rule uh, because, and uh, somehow we need to make it uh, possible to implement that because it is impacting the un in improper management of e-waste is impacting a uh, lot of human uh, like uh, impacting the human health, impacting the environment in a big way. Uh, there is we all know about that, but we do not have a good data from the Indian contest. The research that we are doing uh, will uh, we hope to produce some good data so that that can be used by the, by the uh, policy makers. So, there has been a flourish of recent papers on human and environmental impact. Uh, many of those you see from China as if you look at uh, this uh, 
uh, slide in a little, little bit detail. As you can see over here, most of the work that has been reported actually came from China. And you see that lots and lots of uh, elevated concentration much higher than the safe levels has been reported. For example, here, Liuing et al. 2008, workshop dust, and these are lead concentrations, 110,000 milligrams per kilogram, whereas you can look at a, a risk level is 400 milligram per kilogram. So you can think of so much high. Road dust, 22,600. Then another one, uh, 528.6 to 590. Uh, soil near WEEE facility 90 to 2850, where the risk anything more than 500 milligram, 400 milligram per kilogram is actually not good for human health. So, but there has been a so there has been a debate about uh, restriction on e-waste exportation. That people are talking about not to export e-waste, uh, but it's, it's still happening to some extent. Uh, there are certain rules and regulation in terms of the Basel Convention. Few countries have signed it, some countries have not. U.S. has not signed uh, Basel Convention. So still things are coming into uh, this uh, uh, the developed countries, uh, sorry, developing countries from developed countries in terms of the e-waste. So when it is properly managed, what we saw so far was improperly managed because that's what the human health and environmental impact. When we do the properly managed, you like a typical recycle. This is what we expect to happen in Indian contest. If you look at the typical recycling operation, the waste will come in. Uh, best option is resale for its intended use. If it's still working, facilities will have a testing area where it is tested out, whether it's working or not. If it is working, could be sold off. Many times people, especially in the, in the rich countries, they just dump off their old electronics just because they don't want to use it anymore. It's, uh, they are, uh, it's still in a good working condition, may not be very, very, very super fast, may not be the top of the line machine for the now, but it was a good machine say five years down the five years before, but they don't want to use it, but somebody else like a poor family can use, still use it for a small, like a web, web surfing or Microsoft Office kind of application, so it can be sold off into the market. So those kind of market also exist. So here they have been being tested out, uh, then you will sep separate it out like you have uh, this uh, keyboards. Most of these keyboards looks great, looks okay to me. And uh, similarly, you have mice. Uh, most of these mice are there, which uh, actually looks much better than many of the mice I see here in our offices. So hopefully they uh, might be still working. So it can be tested out and if it's working, can be sold back into the market. And uh, hard drive, uh, in many in some cases, the hard drives will be wiped because the people don't want a hard drive. People will have their own personal information, maybe income tax return, some fam personal family photographs, other personal files or any files that people don't want that to go to some other uh, uh, people's hands. So they want it to be wiped off, uh, to be cleaned off before uh, it can be used. Then it can be disassembled. Uh, the electronic uh, e-waste could be uh, disassembled. And this is how the disassembly is done and different uh, components. So plastics and other stuff can just go into the plastic recycler. Here, as you can see, it is being done in a, uh, with a proper uh, control. He's just, he's just uh, using the screwdriver right now to uh, opening it up and taking things apart and in a ventilated environment. And uh, some of the stuff being done outside as well, it get taken off, different containers, different types of uh, uh, type material going into different uh, drums over here. And again, uh, taking it apart, so those things as you can see over uh, things are being done with a personal, whatever protective equipment needed for that. And uh, so again, uh, dismantling, another uh, for the dismantling part, things are being taken it apart, with different materials going different, uh, different uh, like a uh, container. And after you do that, uh, what, what you do, put materials on the market for bid just like any other commodity. So these are all uh, now material. So if they are material, so for example, uh, this one tested good LCD. So this could basically go back into the market. Somebody will buy it. So and uh, if which ones, it is becoming more common for municipalities to pre-process. So what municipalities try to do is they try to pre-process this electronics as I was telling you earlier. And that uh, basically gives them the value because you separate different fractions and those fractions could be sold off. So health concern of workers is there. Uh, there have been some studies uh, that documented high elevated level of PBDEs in the workers. The recent uh, about prison laborers dismantling e-waste has been reported. Government and industrial bodies are currently working on some practice for disassembly and recycling of e-waste. This far, uh, so disassembly into basic components and subsequent cell. Uh, there could be further process to get recovery, recover valuable uh, and there have been number of studies uh, looking at the different extraction. 
in terms of extraction relatively homogeneous material for example steel aluminum plastic as for msw we have a recycling market for that there is a recycling process for it so it basically goes there and for the stuff which is not uh, but uh, not that uh, present in uh, other other stream of msw so relatively homogeneous material is there but in terms of spill as like crt and plastics uh, some of those plastic because thing with uh, electronic waste is that plastic is a mixed plastic it's a blended together as i was showing you in the previous video so it's very difficult to it's not pet p like a sdp or a P, like it's much many times it's all blended together uh, like you see your uh, um, uh, phone uh, or the remote uh, those those plastics uh, are uh, actually blended plastic and it becomes difficult to recycle them but a major focus on the processing is what we do is we, we is a, is a printed wire board printed wire board it uh, try to recover some of the material so you shred them you shred them make it in smaller pieces so uh, what we try to do is you extract valuable element from size reduced uh, separate size reduced pab to enriched fraction for further extraction now what kind of things you will use so you can use uh, screening density separation magnetic separation ad current electrostatic separation so all the different uh, technology that has been used in other places as well same thing technology could be used for uh, electronics recycling as well so screening density density based on the weight density on the uh, like the uh, weight of that magnetic uh, based on the uh, magnetic charge ad current electrostatic separation based on the charge so those things are done as you can see over here so we have a ionizing electrode a static electrode so it basically on the conductor non conductor so it kind of uh, gets separated into different fractions right there then there are some pyrometallurgical hydrometallurgical biometallurgical where well, like you can do some bio, bio leaching cyanide leaching smelting so all the different uh, things are used in terms of the extraction technologies so those are uh, in terms of uh, extraction uh, in terms of recycling in a proper way now if, if it goes to the disposal if it goes to a landfill so we already talked about recycling uh, if you remember we talked about the recycling part uh, and then we also talked about returning to a uh, manufacturer that was done in the previous video in the uh, just now we finished this recycling part now we'll look at what will happen if it goes to the landfill or waste to energy plant so in that uh, case uh, let's look at in terms of uh, uh, waste to energy plant fate of waste for first the waste to energy plant yes the uh, major concern here is the metal will accumulate in the air pollution control or the in the ash and the dioxins and furans can also form but if we, if it's done at a very high temperature dioxin and furans should not form but just uh, at a lower temperature chances are there uh, mass burn of incineration of msw you have this over boiler municipal solid waste is burning you get the bottom ash we talked about that in the incineration chapter you have the air pollution control you have the fly ash over there so in bottom ash as well as the fly ash you may have traces of electronic waste contaminants showing off so that's uh, uh, that's uh, that is there so depends largely on how the ash is managed if it's there in the ash it depends on how the ash will be managed bottom ash is sometimes recycled so elevated metal concentration could be a concern fly ash is typically managed as a hazardous waste combined ash uh, we goes to msw landfill if it goes to msw landfill then again it may be a, a, a question in terms of how it will have impact on the leachate quality so but there are not much research has been done in terms of partitioning of metals between the bottom ash and the fly ash uh, in specific to uh, w triple e uh, dioxins and furans can form because of the presence of bromine uh, flame retardants so raises concerns about uh, that's uh, this has been uh, has been documented in several studies it's uh, its formation in pyrolysis also has been uh, evaluated uh, it's uh, even uh, has been reported even in the treatments where air was excluded so in, even in the in absence of oxygen uh, as uh, happens in pyrolysis uh, that there also dioxins and furans have been uh, have been found so in that that's concern is there in terms of the going to the landfill as we know modern landfills are lined as you saw you saw this picture both of this picture earlier as well and the leachate is collected and treated so one of the concern we have in terms of uh, 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 in terms of uh, uh, electronics going to the landfill is what the impact it will have on the leachate so as you remember earlier we talked about this tclp test which which uh, predicts uh, the worst case leaching scenario in a msw landfill so here also a standard tclp fluid uh, uh, could be uh, is used uh, which you can do a electronic uh, you can do the uh, 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 sorry you can you can do the tclp test on electronic uh, and then uh, you what you, what you get out of uh, you get the lead concentration coming out so 
As we talked earlier uh, in uh, the previous video or maybe two, two videos before that uh, electronics lead in presence of TCLP fluid which is the acetic acid, acetate, acetate ion and lead they really like each other they make this lead acetate solution which goes it makes a soluble complex and you see lots and lots of lead coming out. That is what you are seeing over here those green bars if you can look at here these green bars are those uh, TCL like a, a TCLP uh, on a, a CRT glass print, printed wireboard and cell phones. Now, when you come to, if you remove this TCLP fluid and you start you and use this MSW leachate instead, you see the concentration going down. And uh, you sh I don't, if you have not noted, this is in log scale. This is in log scale, so the concentration is much much less. So when we go from uh, for the same sample, same CRT glass, when we go from say TCLP fluid to MSW landfill leachate. So what has been done here is rather than using TCLP fluid, we are using landfill leachate as the leaching fluid. The, why we are doing it? Because as you know, TCLP is supposed to simulate worst case leaching scenario in a MSW landfill. But as we know that uh, lead and acetate having a very good uh, soluble complex formation, so we see a very elevated lead coming out. To see that, do we see similar lead coming out in the, if we use that MSW landfill leachate as a solution because that is what will interact with the e-waste in a landfill. So we took some leachate from the landfill and then we did this TCLP test again. Only difference was the other than TCLP fluid here we used MSW landfill leachate and we knew the background concentration of lead. So subtracting that what we got the lead concentration in these cases is much much smaller than what you see in a TCLP fluid. So that's detect uh, that's basically shows that uh, TCLP actually over predicts uh, in a what will happen in a landfill condition especially for a waste containing lead such as electronic waste. So that's what uh, our, that was trying to highlight. So and which is uh, uh, so but the other thing is that as, as you see lead, lead leaching from CRT glass if you look at it as a function of pH as you can see at the lower pH and a very high pH uh, y axis here is the pH sorry x axis here is the pH and the y axis x axis uh, okay just a minute let us go back one up yeah. So x axis here is the pH and the y axis is the lead concentration again uh, lead concentration is in uh, uh, log scale. So as you can see uh, as you go from uh, like a lower pH towards neutral as well as the higher pH towards neutral you see the concentration uh, leachability is much less. Mind it like you should look at this is a log scale. So this is log so concentration is actually much less several order of magnitude lower. Uh, when we go towards a neutral pH. So, and uh, so this is what typically happens at neutral pH we do not see that much leachability happening most of the leachability happens at the very low pH or very high pH. So typically leachate pH is in this range uh, which is around 6.5 to 8 uh, so that is your typical pH which is a very low, low leachability as opposed to that and TCLP leachate pH in the acid forming stage will be somewhere here between 6.5 to 5.5 and our TCLP pH is here. So uh, although TCLP will over predict because just because it is a lower pH if you can uh, look at uh, as a pH being an impact on leachability but as we go towards the neutral conditions uh, uh, the leachability uh, actually goes down. So that is in terms of the batch leaching but there are always a debate that what will really happen in a landfill condition. So to simulate that very quickly I will go over a uh, landfill test which was done. So here a simulated landfill was actually uh, constructed where this is a 3 feet diameter 16 feet long columns and on the side you see a side pipe which was connected this side pipe was connected at the bottom. Uh, this side pipe is uh, connected at the bottom so that the leachate was uh, leachate will uh, as we as you know the liquid will find its own level so leachate will travel from this uh, uh, side to this side at the bottom level and then we can drop uh, we can uh, uh, try to collect the samples from here by dropping a pump so that's how the sampling was done uh, from time to time and uh, we are here we basically made our all MSW uh, municipal solid waste components. So different components, mobile grinder used for size reduction. This was a huge project, many students helped uh, uh, where we were working on this project and you see several students helping out. These are all graduate students, masters and PhD students. That is the good thing about uh, many foreign universities. Uh, this was when I was working as a postdoc and all these students were helping us uh, on this project. So this is uh, 
it's really uh, it's really a teamwork where because you cannot really do such a big project without having a teamwork so these are all uh, different types of uh, waste we are collecting so here you can see different types of waste being prepared uh, plastics food waste uh, a scale used to measure them, then this different types of waste, plastic, glass, metals, petrissible, non petrissible paper, cardboard, and uh, these are going into different containers. Uh, E-waste was disassembled, size reduced keyboard, mouse, cell phone, nickel cadmium, cell phone battery, disassembled monitors, and uh, everything was filled in. You can see computer monitor in one level, desktop computer, so different levels of the waste, waste has different level over there. And then we had a moisture distribution system, so the water will go through. So we looked at uh, all the typical parameters like COD, lead. So let's look at this, where if you look at, uh, these were the three control, two control, which has no electronic waste added to them. And this three e-waste has electronic waste added to them. And this is the box and whisker plot, if you know what they are. Uh, this basically shows you the range. So is if you do a, although these three tends to have a slightly higher concentration than the control, but if you do the statistics on them, they were statistically similar. So what does that mean was actually there was, uh, when it lead goes to the landfill, it doesn't impact leachate quality. But does that mean that it is good for the lead to go to the landfill? Of course not, because you are basically creating a huge lead environment in a landfill. Something happens in future, God forbid, like we had recently an incident in Gajipur uh, where the landslide was happened. So similar things happen because lead in a landfill environment, in a reducing environment, lead becomes uh, with a sulphide. Lead sulphide is formed or lead hydroxide is formed. They have a very low solubility product, so they precipitate out, so they remain in the solid form. So if somehow it gets exposed to air, lead sulfide goes to lead sulfate, lead hydroxide goes to lead oxide, things may start coming into the solution. So those, uh, we, I'm not suggesting that it goes there, but if lead goes to a landfill, it does not impact that much on the leachate. It remains inside the landfill. That's what uh, uh, we, used to, we got from that particular study. So in terms of recycling, uh, what is the motivation? Uh, properly managed, uh, modern control solid waste, it's a risk can be limited, should be limited. Uh, we can, it's a resource management, there are climate change issues associated with that. So a number of studies have conducted life cycle assessment. Uh, there was some US EPA war model, greenhouse gas emissions have been done as well. As you can see here, uh, metric ton of carbon can be saved by source reduction uh, in terms of uh, if with computer we can save much more if we can recycle those computers. There has been a studies that Japan recycles minerals from used electronics uh, about uh, uh, 6,800 tons of gold or the equivalent of about 16% of total reserves in the world can be recovered uh, from uh, electronic waste, so it just from the Japan. So those uh, things are there. And uh, global production of uh, rare earth oxides are going down. We don't have much rare earth oxide left. USA, other countries don't have it. It's the China which has the most. So at some point of time, we, st we have to start recycling. Otherwise, we are just using up all these resources. So in terms of summary, uh, the magnitude summary for the entire e-waste uh, lecture that you had is the magnitude and growth potential of uh, electronics waste coupled with uh, different chemical potentially present justify that we need to, uh, f uh, we, it's, it's, it justifies the interest that we have on this waste stream and additional time and resources are needs to be invested. So it's if managed poorly, this can be a big problem for the environmental health, but if managed wisely, it represents a considerable resource. So in this particular course, we could just do a very quick overview of uh, electronics, but uh, we will, uh, uh, I, like we are, we, in near future, we'll try to come up with at least a, maybe a four-week course on just on electronic waste management, just because this topic is so important in Indian context right now, where we can discuss some of this stuff that we talked about today and some more stuff, in some in more detail, rather than me trying to uh, rushing out things uh, as we had to do some in some of the videos. So in uh, summary, it uh, in again uh, developed countries risks uh, is uh, when. Uh, uh, WEEE when managed using modern regulated solid waste uh, approaches have not manifested a great concern. One possible exception is risk posed to the workers uh, who are doing it because there have been some reports on that. However, managing using traditional developed world uh, uh, solid waste management approach, combustion landfilling represents a waste of resource and, uh, and not the desired option from a sustainability perspective. Ample evidence exists that improper management of WEEE in uh, countries like India or uh, similar countries such as occurred in many parts of the developing world, it can cause a significant human health impact and environmental impact. Development of new 
and the expansion of existing legislation. In Indian context, we already have a new legislation in 2016. Of course, it needs some of the refinement and legislation is always a work in progress. As you learn, you refine and you make it better. And you major thing is in Indian context is the implementation of that uh, uh, regulation. Uh, so, legislation or policy prevent WEEE from developed world being, in, uh, in, uh, being dumped into the developing world is also required. So, the biggest challenge uh, to increase in WEEE refinery is actually it's not the technical issues. Again, as I was telling for the municipal solid waste as well, the technologies are out there. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. The technologies are out there in terms of recovery of heavy material, in terms of the recycling, but the problem more is in the societal as being with, with the societal, political and economic issues. So that's where the problem lies. It's not the technical issue. The W recovery does not lie in the technical issues. It is the societal, political and economic issues. It's, uh, it will more uh, attention is needed from the government or the, uh, the manufacturers, retailers, consumers to assess the appropriate investment in each of these parties towards proper WEEE. So it needs a, all, all the stakeholders needs to come together and uh, look at these things in more uh, totality. So with that, Let's close this video. I think it's become a little bit longer than uh, typical 30 minutes, but that's okay. So with this, uh, we covered this entire 12 weeks material. I hope you enjoyed this course so far. And uh, many of you have, uh, I think, registered for the course, registered for the exam. So all the best for your exam. There will be another two videos of solved problems, uh, which uh, uh, will be up pretty soon. And then uh, at, at the same time, the, we have given you two surveys, one on MSW, one is on e-waste, and we'll compile the results from those two, and I'll do a quick maybe uh, 20 to 30 minutes video, depending on how the results comes out. So with that, again, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed teaching this course. I hope you learned something. And in uh, overall, uh, the goal of uh, doing the helping, the, one of the major goal for uh, offering this course, where one of why, we, why I offered this course is to help the cause of uh, Clean India Mission, the Swachh Bharat Mission. So I hope that you have the, around 7,000 some people who have registered for this course. You have learned some material in this course so that uh, you will be able to, wherever you go, just talk about uh, that what is the best way of managing the waste because that's the one thing we need. Wherever we, in whatever capacity you are, wherever, in whichever forum you can be, please spread the message so that uh, this, this is the way to manage it and this is not the way to manage it. These are the things we should talk about. So I've tried to highlight several times in the presentation over the last uh, uh, 12 weeks. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much. And I look forward to uh, meeting you again sometime in person, sometime online. And uh, if you have any, if I can be of any help anytime, feel free. Uh, right now, use the discussion board. Later on, you can send me email. Thank you.